What is up, Storm Chasers? I wanted to actually talk about this Makia Bryant um, unfortunate. I have to use another word. I can't say the K word. I, th I guess I can say shooting. Um, when I first heard about this, you know, I posted about it on my IG and I see everybody going crazy on social media. But when I report on these types of stories, I like to give you guys a different perspective. I like for you guys to know the legislature and the education and the training behind these officers. I want you guys to basically know why they do what they do, what they do and why they respond to certain situations in, in the way that they do. And so later in this video, you're going to hear an audio from Makia's alleged sister where she gives us more backstory on. On Makia's life and what was actually going on at that house but let's get into it so 15 year old Makia Bryant was unfortunately shot by a police officer in Columbus Ohio um, at first you know like like I said this sounds like every other story that you've you've heard about a black person getting killed by the police it, this also happened to have happened on the very same day that Derek Chauvin was convicted on all three counts of like second degree this second degree that once again I can't say the words because of the algorithm but you get what I get so this also uh helped everybody to pretty much go into a frenzy now she's 15 years old she was actually staying in a foster home um when this shooting occurred so she was not like at her parents house at grandma's house she was at a foster parents house and so with that being said we know or at least you should have some idea of what foster kids go through they're pretty much left by themselves left to fend for themselves and that would um, you know, knowing her situation in the context of things, it starts to make more sense why she felt the need to go and grab a knife to defend herself because literally she is on her own when it comes to these foster parents. And I don't know her foster parents personally, so this is not an attack on them. But from the ones I've worked with and met, these kids are nothing more than a check. All right. Allegedly, Makia may have had some mental issues as well as behavioral issues. And I'm here to let you know when you take in a kid as a licensed foster care agency group home or just if it's just like if like like me and my wife and we take in a foster kid and they have behavior problems or mental health issues that is more money that we get paid every month that we would get paid i'm letting you know i used to do the payments i used to send the checks when you send these kids to behavioral health centers they literally make between one to three thousand dollars per day it's it's a whole system and I'm, I'm not trying to like bore you with foster care talk but i want you to understand how the girl probably felt like she had no one which is why she responded in the way that she did when she was getting bullied and jumped but we're gonna get to that later all right so Let's start first with what we were told, right? So the story that we have been told is that she called the police because she was getting jumped by a group of girls. Um, I'm sorry, by several girls. And she had a knife to actually protect herself. And so when the cop pulled into the driveway, pulled by the house, he literally got out the car, saw that Makia had a knife, didn't know who she was, but just saw it, shot her. And then that was that. Now, when you actually look at the body cam footage, which you can find on Baller Alert um, on IG, from uh, let me just break down to you how it actually went. So the cop actually pulls up to the house, to the foster house. He gets out of the car. There are two women or two people that are standing by a car to the police officer's left, which is later where Makia will get shot in front of that very same car. Um, I can't remember what the other girl was wearing, but one girl is wearing pink. Keep that pink in mind. So the police officer gets out. He asked these two, I think adults, grown girls, hell, I don't know nowadays. And he said, what's going on? What's going on? As he says that, Makia and another girl come out from the frame, out, out of like the right side of the camera. And all you see is Makia running up on some girl. The girl's tumbling. And you don't quite notice the knife in Makia's hand, but it's there. Okay, so then... Um, the cop sees Makia and the girl that she's running up on. Now, mind you, we don't know what was going on in that house. This is the only part we see on the camera. He sees them both fall to the ground. He starts saying, stop, stop, stop. In the heat of the moment, when your adrenaline is rushing, do you really think that Makia was actually able to understand and comprehend what that cop was saying? Like, I'm just being honest with you and I'm just keeping it real in the heat of the moment. If you've been jumped, if you feel like your life is at risk and now you're defending yourself and to the point where you didn't went and grabbed like a kitchen knife because it literally looked like a kitchen knife. That girl wasn't hearing nothing that that man has said. And so it speaks to the difference in how 
colors or uh, races are treated because we've seen several videos of mass shootings that white people have committed. Cops bring them out safely alive, buy them Burger King, get the haircut, and then take them to jail and make them comfortable and don't even put on the cuffs too tight. We've seen many videos where white people are wigging out, throwing a knife, waving a knife at a cop in a cop's face. Cop does nothing but de-escalates it the way that he should. And so should the cop have used his taser? Hell yeah. But had this girl been white, I believe he would have absolutely saw the taser. But I'm just preparing you guys for what you are about to see in the media over the course of the next what? Whatever months until we have a trial, if he's even charged. Number one, this girl's social media and everything she ever done, the media going to find it and put it out there. Anything violent, anything gang related, anything fishy, anything bad, they're going to put it out there and her image and her reputation uh, will be tarnished by mainstream media as much as possible, number one. And then number two, the biggest defense that the cop is going to have is all I saw was one girl about to stab the other. OK, so let me let me finish with my story. Right. So he sees one falls. He says, hey, 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 get down, get down. And he says it a couple times. Now, the girl who Makia was fighting at first, who was on the ground, gets randomly kicked by some other dude standing on the side. Mind you, while these girls were fighting, it was a bunch of grown ass people outside. And as far as I'm concerned, y'all asses is held liable, including her foster parents who was sitting there watching the whole thing go down and let the girl go in the house and grab a knife to have to fight the girl in the first place instead of breaking this shit up like the grown ass was supposed to do. But we're going to get into that later. Now, random, the, the girl that Makia was originally fighting, some random dude, big ass dude, kicks her in the head. And then he goes off frame and he then he runs after the cop shoots. But I just thought that was weird. Like, who the hell is he? Why was he kicking this girl on the ground in the head? Like, what was going What? Yeah, they did everything but break the shit up. They did everything but protect the girl. So the girl felt like, hell, I'm going to protect myself and grab a knife. And we are where we are today. So then Makia then, uh, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, Makia then circles around the girl that was on the ground. As a cop is yelling, get down, get down. Hey, 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 hey. She's in adrenaline mode. She's not hearing nothing that he's saying. She then run towards the girl in the pink. Remember that girl in the pink that was by the car? When the police officer first pulled up, that girl or woman or whatever she is, she then starts running towards her, sees the knife, and he just lets off into her. He lets off into her chest four times. And it's sad that when it comes to us, we get no mistake. We get no chances to make mistakes. We get no benefit of the doubt. Is you out here with you? You out here wigging out doing wrong or perceived to be doing wrong? You gone. Your skin dark. You big. Your hair coarse. They don't get no fuck. And I think, and I don't know why nobody wants to say it, but at some point we're gonna have to talk about the fact that when it comes to being black and dealing with cops that are not black, we scare them. Our skin scares them. Our features scare them. Our hair scares them. It scares them. We are looked at differently than how they look at themselves. I, let me just say it. When it comes to other races, we are still viewed as animals. And they put us down as such. And so you wonder why he's not using proper de-escalation techniques. You wonder why he's not giving her more chances. You wonder why he's not trying to do whatever else he can do. His split his, 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 his brain told him to pull the gun and shoot her four times. Why? Because he sees her as an animal. That's how he sees her. That's how the majority of them see us. And that's a level of honesty that I don't know if they're willing to, to, to have, but Storm is going to have it with you. I invite a cop to come on the show and we can have a conversation. And I just want to ask, when you see a black person, what do you see? Ah, when you see a black person, what do you see? Now, my personal questions, especially for the police. Number one, why did the police officer immediately go to his gun instead of a taser? All right. We've seen white people hold knives, do all kinds of stuff, massively shoot and not be killed. All right. My next question for the police is that I need to hear the full 911 call. We're being told in the media that she called that Makia called 911 and let them know that she was being jumped. However, 
um, it's now being reported in these articles that there are multiple 911 calls. So I need to hear them and I need to hear it all to um, uh, make a better decision about what was going on. Number three, why did her foster parents or any grown ass person out there not stop the fight? Let her go and grab a knife in order to defend herself in the first place. Why did why did the foster parents not protect her? That's literally a part of their duties when they get in their check every month. Why did they not restrain her? Why did they not restrain the other girls that was jumping on her? Why did they allow other girls to jump in on her? I want you guys to actually listen to the sisters commentary. Lost my motherfucking sister, y'all on this bitch playing around and all she had a knife, nigga, because it, she was trying to protect herself, nigga. From a grown ass motherfucking woman, bitch. It's you dumb. My bitch is on this bitch playing and my baby got out, bitch. What you mean? Who? The fuck? She at this bitch house. She's at our foster lady's house, bitch. It's her, Janaya, and beautiful. The foster lady got the next grown ass bitch that used to be her foster kid at the house. This bitch, 30 years, 29 years old. Telling my sisters what to do, calling them bitches, bald headed bitches, all this shit. Starting shit with them. My sister, my youngest sister, called the police. She like, can y'all get over here, please? These girls is trying to fight us. You know, we don't want to call my dad over here to get shit egg doing. We don't want to get put the fuck up out of here. You feel me? Can y'all come over here, please? Boom. Nobody never comes. Nobody never comes. So they call my dad. My dad got to come out that bitch to come and pick my sister up. Mind y'all, y'all been fucking with my sister since the day before yesterday. Calling her all type of names, doing all that shit, man. My baby so motherfucking lovable, man. I'm telling y'all, nigga, she want her to fly. Nigga, she want her to fly, nigga. This my lovable boy sister ever, nigga. She want her to fly, nigga. She don't be on none of that shit. To know her, man. To know her, you a no. To know her, you a no. Y'all on this bitch playing like some shit cool when bitches at your motherfucking house. My baby's 16 years old. This bitch 28, 29 years old. You bringing other bitches over there trying to fight her. She didn't call the police. You all the same motherfuckers that's supposed to protect. What the fuck did y'all protect? Listening to what the sister had to say. Um, these foster parents, in my humble opinion, are going to be held at fault, uh, held, held liable. And as far as I'm concerned, Makia's blood is not only on that cop's hands, it's on the foster parent's hands. Because why was that grown ass girl that used to be your foster kids still staying there? A lot of you guys may not know this, but when you have these foster parents out here in these group homes, you know, they grow attached to these kids. Some of these kids are in these group homes for, you know, a year, five years, three years, whatever. They age out and then they have to move out. All right. So they move out. They typically have nothing, no connection to family, no resources. And so they end up, you know, pretty much being homeless, hitting rough times. They'll contact the group home, contact their old foster home because that's all they knew. You feel sorry for them because you literally raised them and you let them come back into the house and stay rent free. Except that now you have a grown ass person staying in your house with teenagers and young kids. And now you got bullying going on. You got all kinds of fighting. You got, um, um. A, a forcible touching going on like a whole lot of issues simply because a lot of times these foster parents do allow their aged out kids to come back into the house and so this girl according to her sister was being bullied was being bothered caught all kinds of nappy headed hoes uh ball headed hoes uh, just really being talked about i'm sure they talked about her weight as well you know people are not very nice so at the end of the day this girl was tormented this girl was tortured this girl obviously did not come from a stable home otherwise she would not have been in a foster house in the first place this girl was going through a lot on top of being a teenager being jumped having to defend herself and she grabbed a damn knife and unfortunately she made that call to 911 they showed up only seeing her with that knife and they let off in her and it's sad and as far as i'm concerned police officer needs to be held responsible as well as the foster parents now I went 
and actually looked up, tried to look up some legislature in Ohio on how cops are supposed to actually handle uh, these dangerous situations and, and, and what gives them the actual clearance to shoot a person versus tase a person versus, you know, beat them with the stick, uh, whatever that night stick is called. Like what? Like, how do they make the determination between, OK, this is I need to use lethal force or I don't Went to like Ohio Attorney General police training and their little manual will actually pop right up. And this is apparently the revised version, um, I think, as of 2020 or 2021. So it's not that old. OK, so my purpose was I wanted to find out what are the proper steps for the cop to use lethal force. The severity of the crime and immediate threat determines the level of force that a cop can reasonably use. So I want to say that again, the severity of the crime and immediately an immediate threat determines the level of force that a cop can use. And so when determining what the cop can use, level of force that the cop can use, you got to consider these certain factors, the number of officers there, size, age, skill, conditioning, injury, injury, duration of action, environmental factors, known violent history and pre attack indicators. And so the, the, the officer wasn't even there long enough to even make no determination, go through these list of factors in his head. As a matter of fact, you can write all this shit in whatever manual you want to. But when it comes to actually being on the job and doing the job, you're not going to remember none of this. OK, pre attack indicators, <clears throat> non-compliance with orders. Uh, presence of a weapon, trying to hide hands, target glances, clenching hands on body, eye contact, bladed Fight stance, flanking, abnormal breathing, posturing, nervous movement, and body grooming. You guys do need to know that according to the Fourth Amendment, a police officer has the right to use lethal force if they see you are in immediate danger to others. You don't necessarily have to be coming at the cop. If they see you coming at somebody else, then yes, they can use lethal force. And so this is where it's going to get sticky. People are probably going to riot and tear up Columbus, Ohio, when this man is not even charged for shooting this girl. But according to the Ohio legislature, according to how the police officers are actually trained, he's going to say she was not compliant when I told her to get down. He's going to say, I saw a weapon. I saw a knife. Uh, he's going to say uh, she was in a fight stand. She was actively fighting, abnormally breathing. He is going to be able to use all of those pre-attack indicators to actually justify why he used the level of force that he used. And I just want to make sure you guys remember this. Deadly force may be used when a suspect is escaping. It is necessary to prevent the escape. And the officer has probable cause to believe that the suspect poses a significant threat of death or serious injury to others. Now, if you in handcuffs and you run, they can shoot you. That's what that means. A suspect does not have to be armed to justify a reasonable use of deadly force. The totality of circumstances known to the officer when the force was used determines reasonableness in a deadly force situation. If you can kill with your hands, they can shoot you. Although a suspect's known mental illness does not preclude the use of deadly force, the court will consider this as a factor in determining whether the force of use, uh, whether the use of force was reasonable. Now, according to Makia's auntie, she has some issues. There may have been behavioral problems there. There may have been some mental health issues there. And so the biggest factors in whether he's actually charged or not, you know, it's going to be what were her mental health issues and was that reported when the 911 calls were actually made? No. And him just coming on the scene, seeing her, he's not going to know if she has any mental health issues. He's going to get away with that. Then it. It, it, it's just sad because the way the laws are written, the way these police officers are trained, he can do this. When I looked at the situation when I did further research on what's actually allowed and how police officers are supposed to technically de-escalate a situation. There is one common theme that I found in that police officer manual. Uh, I'm sorry, in that resource guide from Ohio, every case study that I read, a taser was used, then the gun was used. Taser, then gun. And the police officers, they, they, they were justified in the shooting in the case studies, but they used a taser, then a gun. Same situations as what this girl was going, uh, what, the, what was happening with Makia. But it was taser, then gun.
And so what we need to focus on is why did he not use the taser and why did he immediately go to the gun? Why did the foster parents not break this up? Why was she in the foster house in the first place? Why was this old ass kid, this grown ass person allowed to come back into the house, which y'all asked for to lose y'all license, number one. And number two, why was they allowed to bully her? Why were groups of girls allowed to bully her? And this happens all the time in foster homes. I'll say this, look, uh, for questions, comments, concerns, if you want to do advertising on my channel, or even if you want your own one-on-one -on -one, uh, YouTube consultation, email me at